Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 473. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 472 to 473. Oh, this video here, we are going to see a huge array formula. Our goal is to extract from a bunch of different rows a unique list. Now, using advanced filter extract unique list is the way to go a couple clicks and boom you got it but what if you had hundreds of rows of data like this an array formula like this might come in handy now this is uh, just about this is January 2010 this is one of the more complicated videos I'm gonna use <coughs> a lot of tricks that I've used before so if you haven't done array formulas or you haven't watched 362 and 368 about the frequency function or you've never done a formula where that uh, an array formula that extracts records then you want to look through this list of videos here and watch them. All right. Uh, we're first going to start off we have some numbers, numbers only and they're listed in a row which is really as we go through the row, we're jumping across columns, so it's actually data uh, in different columns in the same row. And we want to extract those, and they're only numbers. Later at the end of the video, I'll show you some variations on the formulas for any kind of unique list, a unique list of just words, and, and uh, et cetera. Now, let's start off. We're going to use our frequency. And over here is going to be our array formula. Sometimes we may have five values, sometimes we may have two. So we need to count the unique, and then our formula over here will turn off in essence or show a blank when it exceeds this uh, number here. For us, since we are counting numbers, I'm going to use the frequency function, start off. And we're going to use the frequency function to count unique and to help us extract, but they're going to be um, applied in different ways. Data array, that's the data points to count. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to hit the F4 key, one, two, three, and I'm going to copy this because we're copying across the column so that column reference is locked but not the row because when we go down we want it to move to the next row. I'm going to copy that because we're going to use that a few times. Comma and the bins. Now what? We paste the same range usually bins, especially if you've seen some of my stats videos, we have a bin like 10, 20, 30. Those are the upper end values for each category or bin. Here, we're going to just slap those values in and we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and highlight this right here, F9. Notice, what is it doing? It's returning 1, 1, 1, why is it returning a, f a 3 right here? Because the frequency function will ignore these duplicates and it will count them because we slapped in the bins, right? So there's a bin of 23 and there was values and our first argument was uh, the da data array totally ignores the fact that there are uh, three 23's uh, when it sees the bin of 23 it just counts. So we got a 3 there, a 0 because, ah, the 23, it's a value that's already been counted right there. The 1 is for that unique value, and then 0. There's a 0 for a 23, but what's this extra 0? Actually, the frequency function always returns a vertical array with one extra category in case there are any values that exceed the uh, last bin value. Control Z, that's not going to work. Um, if we were just counting because we have a 3 there, so what do we do? There's 1's and 3's. We just say anytime that's greater than 0, that'll give us a true. We need to convert those trues and falses to 1's and 0's to count them. So we'll put a double negative and that thing in parentheses and some product. So we don't have to use control shift enter and that will count that array. Control enter, not control shift enter. You don't need that. And double click and send it down. So that's our formula for counting unique numbers. Now let's come over here. I want you to notice two things about this frequency F9 returns a vertical array. And what that means is that semicolon means next row. So that's a vertical array. And there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
elements. We can't use this same construction right here in our formula over here because it's only returning eight elements and we actually need uh, a, uh, a string or an array of the unique elements but also zeros for all the places that are not. So we're going to have to still we're going to still use our frequency but we're going to use it in a slightly different way. And again, uh, again 362 and 368 I painfully go through all the steps of how this next uh, frequency trick is going to work. We're going to say frequency. Let's think about this first. What is our goal? We're going to use index function to extract uh, the values and what we need is column number one because that's unique, column number two that's unique, three that's unique, four, five we don't need because that's not unique and then six. So somehow if we use the index function we're going to need to create this uh, array one, two, three, four, six and as we copy the formula over this way it's going to index is going to need to see a one here, a two, a three, a four and a six. All right, so you ready? Equals frequency. We'll start with the inside of the formula and build it piece by piece. I'm going to say if any of these values, I think I can control V, any of those values there are not blank, we're going to ha have to use the match function to get the relative or ordinal position and match won't like those uh, zeros out there. We'll return an NA, so this part of it will get rid of those NAs. We'll say if anything there is not blank, then what do we want? Match. Match returns the ordinal position. I'm going to control V, comma, control V, comma, zero, because I want to do an exact match. The exact match will, uh, match part here will give us our ordinal position. Notice, so we have our one, two, four, four, six, four. The uh, NAs, uh, we don't want those. These the not blank over here will help us deal with those. I'm going to control Z. Now I'm going to close parentheses on the if and this little thing will be our data array. So two things. We're ultimately trying to get ordinal position or relative position. The data um, array that we're putting into the frequency function for counting will look like that. So we have all, all these fours um, but then the rest of them get false. Control Z. What are we going to put for our bins for counting? Because remember there was some duplicates, those fours. We're going to put column and I'm going to do that same range. This little construction here, column of the range minus column of the first cell in the range locked across the column plus one. That is a way to get one, two, three, four all the way through. So this in essence will be all of the potential column numbers for our index function. Those are the bins, right? But any bins we slap in here that don't show up here will not be used. It'll return a zero in essence. Control Z. So I'm going to close parentheses on the frequency and watch this. This is going to return something much different than the frequency we used over here. If I hit F9, boom! Vertical array, semicolons, but it has all the extra zeros. Which, is, which we are going to need uh, when we're extracting all the values because we potentially could have values in all of the, the cells. So control Z. Now what are we going to do with this 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0? Control Z on that. Guess what? If you use the if function and put any non-zero number, it's a true. So this is the true false trigger, let me hit F9 again, to tell us where in this array here there is a unique value. See the pattern we've established. So now we're going to have to use small and columns to actually tell the index where which column number to select. But this is the trigger for the if true false. Control Z. I'm going to use small and then if. All right, so the small, if I go right here, it needs an array. And we want an array of all the possible column numbers for the unique value. So I'm going to say if, and even though this frequency looks strange and weird, it's only delivering the logical test, which says it is unique, it's not. So any number is unique, any zero is not unique. Comma, and now what do I want to put here? I'm going to do a column number, right? Because we're trying to get with the, the small for this array, an array of the column number. So I'm going to copy. 
close parentheses here. That's the, that's the array. Then we want to put comma and the K. Remember, as we copy this way, we need one, two, three, four, six. So I'm going to put columns. And this is our number incrementer. I'm in D37, so I'm going to say dollar sign D37, colon D37, close parentheses. Now, I'm going to control shift enter and enter this. And it should give us, for the index, it's only going to need 1, 2, 3, et cetera. Control shift enter, but we're going to see a problem with this. 1, 1, 1, 2, what's going on here? It should be 1 for this first one. And if I copy it down, for the second one, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then something way over. Oh, yeah, that's it, just 1, 2, 3, 4. But it's not. It's delivering 1s. Control Z, Z. Guess what? Remember we talked about vertical arrays? Frequency returns a vertical array. So if I can highlight all the way to this right here and hit F9, semicolons means vertical array. So if, so if you say if and have a bunch of trues and falses, in a vertical array, meaning separated by rows, whatever is coming in for the false, the, that's the if, the, the true or false, whatever is coming in for the true also has to be in a vertical array. Now, I'm going to Control Z before I hard code, code that in. Well, let's go look at what is going into the value if true. F9, it is not. The, the comma means column in array syntax. And so that's not going to work. If we actually went and ran this right now, this 1 to 14 gets returned every single time there's a true up here. And we don't want that. Control Z. It actually is worthwhile to, to, to uh, highlight this and show you what I mean. If I go if. The frequencies of the true false trigger. The columns are being returned. If I hit F9, I have to come up here and show you this. It returns, see those commas? That's column. It returns the 1 to 14 for every row. So the bottom line here is that we can't have we can't have a true with a vertical array and a uh, value of true in a uh, row separated by columns, unless that's what you want. Sometimes multiplying arrays, you do want that. But here we don't. Easy solution, we come down here. Since this is sitting in uh, a row, all the different columns, we just transpose it. So we transpose this column to right there. And now you can see that when we highlight this and hit F9, it's in rows separated by semicolons, just like the frequency part is. Boom, Control Z. So now when we Control Shift Enter and copy this over, now we get our ordinal position. And watch this. I'm going to drag this all the way over here and double click it and send it down. Those are just the ordinal position of the items uh, that need to be returned, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So what are we going to do? We're going to come here and use that inside of index. And I want this range right here. This is our return range. Copy. So what I'm saying here is there's the array, and there is the row number. It really should be column number. So watch this, comma. Skip over it, and it won't return. And it, now we got our column number. But guess what? We don't really need to put that extra column because index is programmed. If there are only elements in a row or columns, it doesn't need the row. I mean, the row number can be interpreted as row or column. In this case, since there's only columns, it'll interpret as a column. Now, when I close parentheses at the end, Control Shift Enter, drag this over. Instead of ordinal position, now we will be getting our uh, actual value which is uh, 4, 5, 9, 23, and 14. Ah, but that's not going to work. We want to get rid of those nums. So we come here and simply do a simple if. If, and I'm going to do the same number incrementer inside of a formula, columns. As we go this way, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. If 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, is greater than this unique count, then what do we want? We want to show blank. Otherwise, if it's less than or equal to, we'll show our index. Close parentheses, Control-Shift-Enter, 
copy it across, and double click and send it down. All right, so there's our unique list, and if we uh, you know, got rid of some values here by deleting for this list four. It wouldn't. Uh, it it will adjust exactly as uh, and show only the v unique values. There's some uh, 23 and 34 over there. Now, two things about this formula here. This was uh, looking at data in a row, and so because there was a mismatch between rows and columns, we had to use transpose. So that's one thing different from this formula than some from some of the ones I'm going to show you in just a moment. And here we only had numbers, right? So we used our formula here uh, that was uh, for counting unique numbers. Now, we're going to see basically this formula without the transpose up here. Here we have data set, just numbers and words, right? So if you want a unique list with all words or numbers, our unique count formula would be something like sum product and not blank and then our one divided by count if. I've done a video on this before. There's a link up at the top. That counts unique values, numbers or uh, words. And then same formulas we saw down there, except for wherever you see a rows or a ro a row, uh, in that other formula we use columns or column. And we didn't have to use transpose, right? Because the frequency right here returns a vertical array and a row when we do this little rows are vertical arrays because rows are vertical, right? That returns a unique list of all values. Now what if it's just numbers? I'm going to use that same formula for counting up there and the only difference between the formula we just saw, we're still using rows and row, the only difference is we had to add an extra if, an extra condition inside the frequency and say is number. Right? So instead of just a criteria of not blank and then getting the, the match, we had to go, is it a number and is it not blank? Similarly, if we're doing want to return from that list of numbers and words just words, the count formula would be is text and the one divided by count if. And this simply has that extra criteria. Instead of is number, it would be is text. Wow, that is a lot of complicated array formulas, but in circum circumstances, uh, having a formula to return a unique list is totally awesome. And um, thanks to Aladdin and others at the Mr. Excel message board for uh, teaching me and others so many amazing things. All right, we'll see you next trick.